Despite being The Conjuring Universe's main antagonist, you have to admit that Valak's movies have been a mixed bag, with The Conjuring 2 being a hit, but The Nun dividing horror fans. Will the sequel, The Nun 2, fare any better? Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well. My name is Sarah and welcome to What The Horror, the channel where we talk about horror movies old and new. That's right, today we are talking about and reviewing the newly released The Nun 2. If you haven't seen The Nun 2 yet and need a refresher of Valak before you do, then make sure you check out my The Nun recap episode, which I will leave a link to here. During the episode, I'm going to talk a bit about the production of The Nun 2, then I'll do a brief spoiler-free review, and finally I'll get into the spoiler section, the meaty bit. But I will give you a warning before we get into the spoilers, so don't worry. When James Wan created The Conjuring Universe, beginning with The Conjuring back in 2013, he had a long-term vision of how this would be a franchise, how the films could link together, and would all be based off of the case files of Ed and Lorraine Warren. And The Nun was no different. When The Nun was released in 2018, its antagonist Valak had already appeared in The Conjuring 2, and the film's ending, with an exorcism being performed on Frenchie or Maurice, linked back to and was a replay of The Conjuring. Before The Nun was even released, James Wan already had an idea where The Nun 2 could potentially go. There were events happening in the Conjuring movies and the Nun movies, and the idea was for the Nun 2 to bring these stories together and potentially link up the Nun and the Conjuring to explain how Ed and Lorraine became involved with Frenchie. Despite ideas already brewing back in 2017, certain world events would delay the production of The Nun 2, but it was announced that Michael Chaves would be directing, having previously directed The Curse of La Llorona and The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. It was also announced that Thaisa Famiga would return as sister Irene, along with Jonas Bloquette returning to his role of Frenchie. These two returning characters are then joined by Anna Popplewell, known from the Chronicles of Narnia films, and Storm Reid, known from The Last of Us, The Suicide Squad, and The Invisible Man. Okay, so let's start off with the spoiler-free review. I'll keep this short and sweet. Um, there's not much you can really say about it without getting into spoilers, but the Nun 2 is, in my opinion, a stronger instalment in the franchise than its predecessor, The Nun. The returning characters feel like a natural progression of the versions we saw in the original, and the new additional characters, while not always used very well, don't hinder the story. We do get more screen time with Valak, although I feel like there is more screen time, but it borders on still not being quite enough. The beginning of the film does feel like a slow pace and takes a lot of time setting stuff up. However, once you hit the midway point, the pace, the action and the story really pick up and that's when the film comes into its own. Scare-wise, it's the usual jump scares. Even though they do try to do something a little different with them, they are still just jump scares. I will say that this one is far gorier than the first and perhaps gorier than most installments in the Conjuring universe. Not Saw level, but gorier. What's great is that we are given much more information on Valak and the story now begins to evolve and shift so that it can link up to the events that have been shown and set up in The Conjuring 1 and 2, which I'm personally really excited about. All in all, I think The Nun 2 is fine, better than the original, and I would say go check it out. It's definitely worth a watch. Oh, but make sure you stick around for the credits because we do get a fun little mid credit scene. Okay, this is your warning for getting into spoilers, so if you haven't seen the film yet, or you don't want spoilers, then this is your cue to vamoosh. But if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to give it a little thumbs up before you go, as it does help the channel, and if you're going to see The Nun 2, then I hope you enjoy it. Okay, spoiler time. Now, I don't really know how to order my thoughts on the film, so I'm just going to go through them. Starting off with the opening of the film. It's not the strongest, in my opinion. The film starts in France, 1956, and we follow a boy who is playing football, then gets wine in a church for the priest, and the priest performs communion. Then there is a scene with the football, which is 
well, it's just a predictable scare. You know, the ball rolls into the darkness and then it rolls back out because, oh no, something is hiding in the shadows. Now, we've had some incredible cold opening scenes in horror and within the Conjuring universe itself, there are some really good ones. But this one just felt lacklustre. It looks great though, visually, and I did really love the ending of it, actually the very last shot where Frenchie, or Maurice, is walking away from the church and his shadow is actually that of Valak. And as he walks away from the church, the shadow shrinks and joins in with him. It's a great visual and a reminder that the demon is attached to a person now. We then get the setup of the film, which is jumping back between a boarding school in France where Maurice works as a gardener slash handyman and an abbey where Sister Irene is now stationed. This setup is then the structure of the rest of the film, or at least the film for the majority of the runtime. It jumps back and forth between the two settings as the story progresses. On one of the jumps back to the abbey, we get an introduction to the new character, a sister Deborah. Sister Deborah is played by Storm Reed, who is a fantastic actor and does a good job with what she's given. The introduction of this character is to act as a sidekick to Sister Irene to aid her in her investigation and to act as a sort of replacement for Father Burke from the first film, who they've killed off in this one off screen from cholera, if I can remember right. The problem with this character is that like the film itself, she's weaker in the beginning but then gets stronger as the film progresses. And there's also this added little subplot of Sister Deborah having not really found her faith yet due to a racist act on her family and the death of her mother. And her goal in the film, the reason why she runs away from the Abbey to help Sister Irene, is to search for the proof of a miracle. Sister Irene makes a passing comment of, let's hope you find your faith by the time we find the demon. Uh, you know, as though hinting that Sister Deborah might become a key and integral part in saving the day. But this doesn't come to anything later. Sister Deborah just says that that was a miracle to Sister Irene after some impressive religious magical event. So a good performance from Storm Reed, but I feel like, in my opinion, Sister Deborah isn't the strongest addition to the Conjuring universe. In the early part of the film, we also get a really random potato peeling exposition. Honestly, a bunch of nuns sit around peeling potatoes while one of the older nuns tells the others the events of the first film. Just to remind us in case we'd forgotten. Look, I get they may want to remind you, but it just feels like a massive exposition dump. And the nun that's telling the story says that the nun involved in the first film went mad and ended up in an asylum. Despite it being very clear from the little side eyes she's giving that she knows that it was Irene. And the exposition makes it seem like Irene's identity is a big secret, that the whole event is a big secret. But most people in the church seem to know and talk about it openly. So I have no idea why it was made out that she'd gone mad and that no one knew who she was. Another strange scene in the beginning of the film is that of a delivery girl who comes to the boarding school where Maurice works. It builds for a while with some false jump scares, but then there are some very strange editing choices. Just when you get to the exciting bit where Maurice turns into Valak and attacks the delivery girl, it just proceeds with a bunch of very fast cuts and zooms right past Valak and the girl's death. And that is another thing. I mean, according to Scream 2, sequels are usually bigger and bolder. And yes, we do get more of Valak than we did in the first nun. The demon is on screen more than it was in the first, but only in fleeting moments. It appears, it scares, and then it disappears again. I don't know. It, it's a fine line to walk, isn't it, with your villain? Do you go down the alien Jaws route of keeping your villain mostly off screen, or do you give audiences what they want? The nun. Although the bit where Sophie opens a door in the boarding school and it opens up onto Valak in the Warren's corridor, that was pretty cool. I think unless you've rewatched The Conjuring 2, is it The Conjuring 2? Yeah, The Conjuring 2, you probably might miss that. The first part of the film is really slow in pace. Lots of setup, reintroduction of old characters and introduction of new characters. To me, it was a little too slow, if I'm honest. It didn't feel as though it dragged, the pacing wasn't that bad, but not enough happened. It jumped between Sister Irene being in the Abbey, finding out the demon is still here and then going to find and destroy it, with 
the girls in the boarding school being little bullies and then being scared by the demon and Maurice just slowly deteriorating as the hold that Valak has on him takes its toll. I will say that after the scene where Irene and Deborah visit the archives in France, the film vastly improves from that point in terms of pacing, action, soundtrack, and use of the characters both old and new. That is when the film really does come into its own and I'm finally interested. I also have to say that the film visually looks gorgeous, but you see, I think the Nun film did as well. I think that I get more enjoyment from the first one than other people because I appreciate the gothic aesthetic of the dilapidated abbey, all of the dark corridors and candlelight. And this one is just as, if not more beautiful to look at. The contrast between the lights and darks is great. Perhaps it is a little too dark at times, but that's honestly only occasionally. And while the first nun had a lot of these cool blue hues to it, this one has a lot of warm colors, lots of yellow and orange that I think really help create the warmth of the European countries that it's set in. As far as the scares go, they're fine. To be honest, it is mostly just jump scares, some genuine, some false, you know, someone banging on the window or a bird flying past and making a noise. There are some good ones, some really well-crafted ones that have a great payoff, but these are ones that they put in the trailer. So when you're watching the film, and if you've seen the trailer, then you, you know what happens. Take the magazine stand scare, for example. This is one of the best in the film, in my opinion. It's an excellent setup that looks and sounds fantastic. And if I didn't know what happened because of the trailer, then I think I could, you know, or it could build up some genuine suspense for me. But I did, and it didn't. It's such a shame that they gave that one away in the trailer. The Nun 2 also sets up jump scares where you think the scare will come from one place only for it actually to come from somewhere different, like maybe behind. Still just a jump scare, but I get that they're trying to catch you off guard. They're trying something different, but the problem is they're always doing that. So as the film goes on, you begin to learn the pattern. And so you now know the jump scare will come from somewhere else. So this misdirection no longer works. I will say, however, that I think the best scare, and I think it's the best scare because it actually creeped me out, is the goat in the last act of the film. So Valak has taken the form of a demonic goat and stalks the staircase of the boarding school, only to chase one of the girls and sister Deborah into a room. I hate the sound of footsteps running. Anything running towards me just creeps me out. So this one worked really well for me personally. I guess it wouldn't necessarily work for everyone, but I liked it. I think it's also worth noting that The Nun 2 is far gorier and violent than the first and all the films in the franchise. Like I said in Spoiler Free, don't get me wrong, it's not Saw level gore, but there is a fair amount of blood and splatter going on. And I also think that um, Valak is far more twisted in this sequel. I mean, in one death scene, she changes into the form of a woman's dead son to kill her. That's stone cold. Okay, so let's talk a bit about returning characters, Sister Irene and Frenchie. These two are definitely stronger aspects of the film. Within the story, time has passed since the events of the first film and experiencing something like that would change you. It would stay with you. And The Nun 2 shows us a much more mature and grown sister Irene, but one who is still haunted by what she witnessed and experienced. We also get to dig a little more into her background and we now learn that her mother had the same gift and abilities as she does and that her father had believed her mother to be insane and so had her sent away to an asylum. It's interesting to learn more about Irene, but the point of this inclusion is to tie into a much bigger aspect of the story that the film explores rather than developing Irene. I mean, it does develop her, but again, it's more to do with developing the plot than her. As for Frenchie, man, Jonas Bloquette does an incredible job this time round. Like Sister Irene, Maurice has grown and matured from the experiences of the last film. In that one, he was much more of a Jack the Lad, ladies man. By the end of the film, he had proven himself by returning to the Abbey to help Burke and Irene. 
But now in the Nun 2, we see a very different, much more grounded Maurice. Jonas's portrayal is more subdued and like I say, just more mature. Maurice is such a likeable character in this one that to me, it makes it a really sad and tragic story. As soon as he found the body of Sister Charlotte, he was just screwed. And as an audience, having seen The Conjuring, we know his ending. Well, we know he's still possessed in the 70s. We don't know if he dies or if he is successfully exercised. I don't think. But we watched this film knowing he's still possessed by the end of it. And the fact that this is all happening to such a nice guy, it just makes it so much sadder. This also means that the ending of The Nun 2 isn't a happy one, where the sun has come up and all is well, but only we know that, the, the characters don't. To add on to Maurice's character, I think that The Nun 2 shows us something interesting and something we don't often see in possession movies. Usually we see the first stages of a possession where a target is chosen and then haunted and broken down. But usually, especially in the case of the Conjuring films, the victim is saved, but The Nun 2 explores what happens when someone is successfully possessed and no one knows. So I appreciate that they are doing something a little bit different in this one. Okay, so now I want to talk about the story as in the new developments in the story that are beginning to now link the nun and the conjuring. So in the nun too, we learn that Valak was once an angel, but was rejected by God. And that when this happened, Valak lost its powers and it now wants them back. And to do this, it is seeking out an ancient relic, the eyes of Saint Lucy of Syracuse, the patron saint of the blind. We learn that after Saint Lucy was killed, or while she was being killed, she was set on fire, but wouldn't burn, and she had her eyes gouged out. That's what Valak is searching for. We also learn that the descendants of Saint Lucy scattered across the world, and it is those the descendants that are being targeted and killed by Valak while hidden in Maurice. Now, what makes this interesting is that we learn that, and to be honest, guessed as soon as we heard about the descendants, that Sister Irene is, like her mother, a descendant of Saint Lucy. And that is why she has the gifts she does. We also learn, as it is implied, that Lorraine Warren is potentially another descendant explaining her gift as well. This could also explain why Valak targets Lorraine in both The Conjuring 1 and 2. Now, I like this addition. I knew, well, I expected they were going to explain a link. And as far as explanations go, I think this is a pretty solid one. It works for me anyway. It isn't 100% confirmed about Lorraine being a descendant, but like I say, it is heavily, heavily implied. But I guess they can't actually say that 100%, can they, seeing as how she's a fictitious version of a real person. So within the story, like I said earlier, Valak is trying to find the relic of the eyes of St. Lucy. We're told that if Valak gets hold of them, then the damage it can do would be terrifying. But if Irene got hold of them, then she would be able to defeat the demon and send it back to hell. Great idea, great way to build suspense. However, one major issue with this film is that we know that Valak Valak is in The Conjuring 2 in the 70s, and Maurice is still possessed in the 70s, or 60s. So for me, this removes most of the tension. There aren't any real stakes because we, we can know the outcome. <laughs> My stomach keeps rumbling. I'm so hungry and I am melting. <sighs> there is one scene where we're supposed to believe that Maurice has died, and it's sad. Irene is mourning and thinking back to memories of him, but all the while, I'm just sat there thinking, yeah, but he's still alive. Don't get me wrong, though the scenes are still well written, well structured and well acted. Thaisa and Jonas really do such an incredible job in their roles as Irene and Maurice, but all of that is still just hindered by being a middle linking part of the story. I did find it funny though, how when Maurice inevitably gets back up and Valak gets its hands on the eyes, Irene and Deborah can't defeat the demon because they're just too short. They can't reach the eyes in its hands. I really identified with that. <laughs> Sharp people problems, am I right? The ending was a little lackluster. We've been warned that Valak with the eyes would be terrifying and yet it gets them and then just messes around with Maurice and Irene. They temporarily defeat it with some holy wine and Maurice heals from the events 
And that's it. The most interesting part of the film's ending, for me, is the very last scene with Irene and Maurice. Because I don't know how to take it. So, Maurice is weakened from what's happened. He says sorry to Kate and Sophie and then walks away with them. I guess the film's telling us he's now in a little ready-made family. A happy ending for Maurice. Irene watches him go and looks just really sad, really forlorn. And there is this lovely beautiful shot of her hand with her rosary in it in the forefront and behind her hand slightly off focus is Maurice. Just excuse the noise my neighbours moving their bin. <laughs> oh. Now to me now to me it <laughs> Now, to me, it could be taken two ways. Number one, it was slightly hinted at that Irene has feelings for Maurice, and we know Maurice liked Irene. So maybe this is her looking at what she might have had, this family, but can't, and the rosary beads represent her religion being the thing dividing them. Or, number two, she knows that he is still possessed by Valak. She's a seer, she has the gift. And perhaps the rosary beads simply represent how he'll need the help of the church again. The cross over the top of Maurice just shows that, you know, he still needs help. He's still possessed. I um, I joked in my Nun recap episode that the Conjuring universe is a bit like the Marvel universe, but it really is because now we're getting credit scenes, which, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we've had that before in the Conjuring films. But this time we get a mid credit scene of The Warrens. And hey, I'm always happy with a movie including an appearance from Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga. No complaints from me. I love those two. The director said that The Nun 2 would act as a bridge between The Nun and The Conjuring, tying together things that had been set up in the previous films. And I think that it did that. It didn't exactly link up to The Conjuring, sure, but it did bridge the two. It implied that the reason Irene and Lorraine look similar and both have the gift is because they are descended from St. Lucy. And it has also set up the next stage of Maurice's story leading up to the Warrens' involvement. Because let's be honest, there is going to be a nun three. That's my prediction anyway. I think the next one will be um, the Warrens' involvement with Maurice and his story's ending, which I hope is a happy one. It may sound like this is a mostly negative review of The Nun 2, but far from it. I'm just pointing out that there are weaker points to it, but mixed in with stronger ones too. I think The Nun 2 could actually be better than the first one. In fact, nope, I'm going to say it is. It is better than the first one. And I did like the film. Is it the best in the Conjuring universe? Well, you'll have to wait for my Conjuring Ranking episode to find out, but I will say it is certainly not the worst. I had a good time with it and I would have no issue recommending it to lots of people. And I'm also excited to see what they do next in this story. I am invested in this story now and I'm happy to... Well, no, I'm excited to and I would be happy if they did another one that would finally bring everything full circle. Well, there you go, guys, my review of The Nun too. If you've seen the film, let me know your thoughts down below, but maybe put a warning um, above your comment first if you're going to be talking spoilers, seeing as how it is still a new release. If you are a fan of the Conjuring films, then I will leave a link to my Conjuring playlist and make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already so you don't miss out on my ranking of the Conjuring universe episode, which should be out the week after next. But before that, next week's episode will be a Saw recap like the one I did for The Nun. This will act as a bit of a road to Saw 10, covering the events of the first film, but also John and Amanda's twisty attorney timeline leading up to it. But in the meantime, thank you as always for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye. <laughs>